Welcome to my channel, Angela Xuejing. Today I'll be tidying up my art studio Marie Kondo style. As you can see, my art studio has gotten really messy recently. I have all my works in progress out on the table. I've got shipment boxes and art supplies that I've recently purchased all over the floor. I decided to film this cleanup to give myself a bit of motivation and it actually worked. I was focused on cleaning this all up in two days, whereas it usually takes me much longer to clean up a whole room. I completely designed my art studio from scratch over the past year. Before I made my studio, I used to do my art in a little corner of my bedroom, on the rug in the middle of the living room, in front of the TV, on the kitchen table. I would sew on piles of fabric right next to a foosball table and I'd have to navigate the clutter. So I decided to turn the old playroom that I had in my house, which had become a storage room, into my beautiful art studio. I'll be uploading a before and after video on the entire process of creating this space, so be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you're new to my channel, this is Bambi and Marshmallow. They're actually sitting right next to me as I'm recording my voiceover. Say hi, Bambi! Hi, Marshmallow! <coughs> yes, they do sound like goblins. Hi, Roy! I also have my brother's dog, Roy, with me. We are visiting the ocean in Monterey. If you're an artist or creative person, do you like to keep your studio space or workspace clean and tidy? and minimal, or do you prefer to work with clutter? In designing this space, I wanted to incorporate oriental elements. I used some trinkets and decorations that my grandma had brought from China many years ago. And I also hung this orange lantern that you see in the corner that I purchased in Kauai last February from a historic Chinese American shop. But I also wanted to reuse my kitchenette that I played with as a child as a cabinet for my paint supplies. And I had to add this gorgeous pink chinoise re wallpaper after I saw the wallpaper in last season of Bridgerton. 
So my room turned out to be a dollhouse oriental bohemian style and this perfectly describes the direction I'd like to go with my art and fashion design. This is Lala. She's my 80 year young grandmother. She's from Beijing, China, and she's about 5 foot 1. She didn't know I was filming, so she said hi to the camera. And she's getting a few art supplies for herself. She loves learning. So she's always signing up for these online classes and chatting with her classmates and asking her teacher for advice. She actually was a teacher back in China herself. She was a math teacher. So she's really a lifelong student and she's been learning how to paint for the past few years. So I recently took a fashion illustration course from Parsons, New York. I just took it remote because I live in California, but I absolutely love this course. I was so excited. I've been doing lots of figure illustrations since then, and I've been hanging them on my window, but now I'm cleaning everything up and putting those away into a portfolio that I got. Did you see the last season of Bridgerton? And if so, what did you think? Let me know in the comments. I personally wished the characters from the first season were still in season two. You know who I mean. But I loved seeing more of Penelope. I totally ship Penelope and Colin. They are so cute together. But I have to say, my favorite part of Bridgerton is the costumes and the decor. I live for Bridgerton dresses and the anthropology style wallpaper. Is it historically accurate? Not completely, but I find it even more interesting that way. I love the pink on pink on purple Regency decor. I loved how the Sharma ladies wore these lilac blush hues. So if you are or not a Bridgerton fan, let me know. I'd love to start a Bridgerton discussion. 
What I did notice is that Bridgerton's pretty popular among people a little younger than millennials or among Gen Z, but millennials tend to prefer more historical Regency films like Pride and Prejudice that don't feature Taylor Swift songs or Harry Styles songs. I love Keira Knightley, but I don't know, I just can't get into Pride and Prejudice. I think it's the person that plays Mr. Darcy. He just doesn't do it for me. Personally, I love Becoming Jane with Anne Hathaway and James McAvoy. That would probably be my favorite depiction of this time period. Those are two of my favorite actors, and I think the chemistry and the acting is so well done in that movie. I think that it's very underrated. There's actually some negative reviews of that film, but I don't get it. I love that movie. It's so cute. So while my Bridgerton inspired art studio has been pretty much finished for a few months, I haven't been able to organize this closet. So this is the first time I'm really doing a deep clean of this closet and really Marie Kondoing it. Things were stuffed in this closet, things were falling out, so I really wanted to take care of that. I had a lot of American Girl doll accessories and toys in this closet, which I ended up needing to place in a totally separate room because I wanted everything in this room to relate to what I was creating. My fashion, my sewing, my art, and any sentimental objects I definitely didn't want to get rid of, but I wanted to put in a different closet or room. One thing that I try to do is reusing any packaging materials that I can from things that I purchase when packaging orders that I'm shipping out to customers. So I've been reusing bubble wrap or packaging paper. I sometimes can't reuse the boxes because they might have the label of whatever I purchased on it. So I'll just have to use a new box.
So I wasn't able to film cleaning up this part because I was pretty tired and I just wanted to get it done. But this is my beautiful organized closet. It's clean, it's tidy. There's nothing falling out when you open the door anymore. The bottom level is for packaging materials and longer tubes of wallpaper or wrapping paper. The next level is for my technology. The third level is for my fabrics. And then I have books that my grandfather gave me. He's also an artist. And I have boxes of some of my products like stickers, or pins. Next I have some bigger pieces from my portfolio and art canvases that I use. Finally I have an extra dress form that I rarely use. I got it for just about $20 at a store that was closing. It's not super useful because it doesn't have a base and it's also, it's not as high quality as my other dress form which by contrast was about $500. I am finally hanging up this lantern that I've had sitting on my art table for almost a year, probably about eight months. I'm so excited to hang it up because it's just been obstructing my sewing station and it's so beautiful in the sunlight. The, the evening sun shines through it and it really gives this gorgeous sunset color. Once again, I'll be uploading a video showing the entire process, start to finish, of creating this art room from scratch. It used to be a very cluttered storage room, and I painted most of this furniture by myself. That's also on my channel, so be sure to like, subscribe, and check out my other playlist. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.